Welcome. Hello, everyone. I'm delighted to be here today on the LF Edge Summit uh, Ones. And I'm here with my co-presenter, uh, Glenn Darling. My name is John Wallachy, and uh, we are really delighted you're joining our tutorial today. We've got a whole section on how to build uh, and deploy AI workloads at the edge. We're going to talk about uh, both Open Horizon, the open source project as part of the LF uh, edge. And then we're also going to build some actual containers and got containerize some workloads and we'll deploy to my Raspberry Pis behind me. Um, so, but the way we're going to structure this, we're going to introduce you first to Open Horizon and uh, Glenn will take you through that. And then I'll take away, take it away with some hands-on demo. Glenn, go for it. Okay, cool. So I was part of the original development team of six engineers that built this software at IBM and uh, then we open sourced it. Um, so I'm able to answer the, you know, your deep technical questions if we uh, have any of those and we'll get a little bit farther in. But now I have a business development role for our IBM version of the product. So what is Open Horizon? Well, it's fleet management for containerized software and data files. And it supports most kinds of standalone Linux hosts, 512 megabytes of RAM and up. And I actually sometimes deploy it onto a Raspberry Pi 1 that only has 256 megabytes of RAM and it works just fine there, but uh, the workloads can't be very large. Um, so we support x86, 64, ARM 32 V6 and above, and ARM 64, which is the V8 platform. And uh, we even support PPC 64 LE. And there's a, there's a group of folks who have made it run on a RISC host as well, but that's not been released yet, RISC V host. And we also support most types of Kubernetes clusters. So you can either manage containers on a cluster or you can manage containers on standalone Linux hosts. <clears throat> so our very small 30 megabytes of RAM at runtime, a fully autonomous agent runs on each of the nodes driven by the policy that you set for the agent. And the agent does not bind or listen to any external ports. So you can completely firewall off the agent um, just so that it can reach out to our management hub to, to find out things. Nothing ever tries to connect directly to the agent. And all of the components in the system offer a rich set of REST APIs. And we also provide a CLI for easy access. And uh, new with the most recent release, we have secret management. So you can securely deploy credentials to your edge machines using Vault. And we have uh, secure device onboarding or SDO, which enables really zero touch install. All you have to do is connect the power and the network and walk away. You don't need to do any installation on the host at all yourself. And the SDO software will reach out if you've purchased an SDO device, it will reach out and it will get all the race software and install itself and uh, configure itself. Um, we also support independent life cycles for your code and your data files. So uh, data files will, that we were thinking about were these very large uh, machine learning model files, neural network model files. And so Open Horizon enables you to continue to run your neural network and update the model without any service downtime. It can be using the old model on one inference, and then it can switch over and use the new model on the next inference. And you don't have to shut down the container and bring it back up again or anything like that. And of course, Open Horizon is open source and its governance is under the Linux Foundation Edge project. There's a link there and uh, here's a QR code that you can use to hit that link. And, uh, you know, IBM uh, pays my salary, so uh, I have to talk about the IBM commercial distribution of Open Horizon that's called IBM Edge Application Manager. <clears throat> and uh, or IEAM, oh, lost focus there. And there's a link to it. It supports up to 40,000 nodes for management hub and a node can either be one of those standalone Linux devices or it can be an entire Kubernetes cluster as a single node. And of course we have 24 by seven by 365 support from IBM. 
And we also add a graphical web UI <clears throat> to complement the REST APIs and CLI that are available on uh, regular Open Horizon. And there's a QR code that you can use to hit the IBM commercial distribution version. And here's just a quick peek at what the web UI of Edge Application Manager looks like. You can hit nodes, services, patterns, and deployment policies and uh, interact with them, create them uh, visually on the, in a web client. So let's talk about the architecture. It's based on Linux containers and it supports any Docker compatible registries, uh, repositories for these containers to live in. It's decentralized, the agents are fully autonomous, and they are untrusting. Uh, we use a zero trust model. And when I say decentralized, um, that word seems to be popping up in a few places now. So I want to clarify that. In fact, the original version that we built of this used only peer-to-peer -peer technologies. So we used the Ethereum blockchain for rendezvous and for agreement negotiation and BitTorrent for transferring files and Whisper for communication between the components. And we had no central uh, components at all. It was completely decentralized. The agents on the each nodes talked to each other to arrange for software deployment. Now, to get greater scale, we did add a central management hub and we've kept it minimal. There's many components in the management hub, but they're all very small and they each have a very focused um, role. So having small scopes of authority minimizes the risk of systemic compromise. Even if you were to compromise one of the components of the management hub, you wouldn't be able to do very much with it. So we have a zero trust model. We use certificates and encryption and cryptographic signing everywhere. And we really worked to preserve the privacy of the edge nodes. And uh, surprisingly, even the IP addresses of the edge nodes are kept private in this system. And we allow independent life cycles for code and data, like I mentioned. And to minimize human involvement, we use a zero ops approach or a zero touch approach wherever possible. Uh, we want to be able to automate everything in this environment because when you have 40,000 nodes, it's really difficult to get things right if a human is involved in the process. So you just state your intent, which we call policy. Then the agents collaborate with the management hub components to make it real across your entire fleet of edge nodes. So let's take a little bit closer look at Open Horizon. How does it work? We have an autonomous agent on each edge machine or each cluster on each node, in other words, and it will keep working even when it's disconnected from the network. And so an example of that is if you are deploying a workload and it keeps failing over and over, you can automatically roll back to an older version that you had running on that same node, even if the network is down. And you specify uh, how you want that to work by creating rollback policies. And there's quite a flexible language for defining uh, multiple levels of rollback. And, you know, what consists, uh, what does a failure consist of? How many times does it need to fail within so much time before you consider it a real failure? And uh, let's talk about the management hub a little bit. It has a bunch of different components. As I mentioned, there's the exchange, which is really just a way to access the shared database of items that have been published into the system. We have agreement robots, which we call agbots, that collaborate with the agents. And in that first version that we wrote of this, agents and agbots are really just the same piece of software. And uh, we now have the agreement robots in the management hub, but originally they were just in all of the individual nodes themselves. And then we have a switchboard. And the switchboard is a blind mailbox service that the agents and agbots use to talk to each other. And then there's the model management service. This is the thing that um, enables the independent life cycles for the, your data files. And we have the secrets manager to securely distribute credentials and a rendezvous server. And this is optional. It can be used with the secure device onboarding. And I'll talk about that in a moment. And then we have the web UI if you use the IBM version, the graphical component. 
So let's see how the pieces fit together. So first of all, here's the exchange with all of those pieces I just itemized for you. And uh, you need some Docker compatible container registry out there or multiple ones. And then you need uh, some edge nodes. So uh, here's an example edge node that is an SDO computer. So if you purchase a computer that has the SDO, uh, the SDO software installed, um, then uh, it will come with an ownership voucher and the voucher and the SDO software are matched and they have information about what rendezvous server to use and they have a unique identifier for this particular host. And so when you purchase it, it already is set up like this and you just get the ownership voucher that goes along with the computer. And I'll talk about that, how that works in a moment. Or you can just take any other edge computer and then install our agent onto it. So there's a single script that you wget down onto your node and then you run it and it will install the agent and, and the ESS, which is the part of the model management system, which allows for those independent life cycles I was talking about. So let's take a look at a couple of typical onboarding scenarios for these two types of edge nodes. So first of all, the secure device onboarding or SDO. So with that, you begin by importing the voucher into the Management Hub Exchange. And then once that has happened, the exchange will look inside the voucher at which rendezvous server it specifies. Now, you can specify the one inside our Management Hub. And this is usually only useful if you're creating your own SDO computer by installing the SDO software yourself manually which uh, some of our partners do. Um, uh, normally though, you would buy an SDO computer and would have its own rendezvous server from the manufacturer. But in any case, the exchange will reach out to whatever rendezvous server it is and register that voucher and say that this exchange is going to uh, manage that node. Then uh, at that point, you're all ready, and all you need to do in the field is take that SDO computer and plug it in and connect it to the network. So once it comes up, the SDO software on board will reach out to the rendezvous server. And as I said before, it could be a different rendezvous server, doesn't matter. The exchange will have spoken to the rendezvous server to give it the information. The rendezvous server then says, here is all the software you need to install. Here is how to configure it for this particular exchange and for your particular role that you're supposed to have a little computer in this uh, environment. And so uh, at that point, you have an agent that's registered and the ESS software as well. And the agent will be working with the management hub to get the appropriate software installed for the role that you've designated using the policy that you designated for this uh, device to come on board with. Now, if you're doing manual onboarding, you need to somehow connect to the edge computer. You can use the console if you, you know, connect the keyboard and the monitor to the machine, or you can SSH over the network to the machine. And then you configure your credentials in the shell, the Linux shell environment. And then you download and run the agent install.sh script. And the result of that will be the same as if you use the SDO onboarding uh, software. So some notes about once you have a registered device, you can choose to register the device either with a deployment pattern or a deployment policy. There are two different mechanisms in Open Horizon. Policy is the underlying foundation of both, and it's much more powerful, much more flexible, but uh, patterns are simpler for beginners to use. So usually when people start, we suggest that they use patterns, but you'll want to graduate to policy as soon as you're ready. Um, and the policies that you set govern the autonomous agent's behavior. So the agent does everything that it does based upon the policies that you have set when you registered it. And of course you can change the policies as well over time. So once you have your autonomous agent all registered, it's got its policy. How is uh, the software managed on these machines? Well, first of all, let's note that the agent can be completely firewalled. So, um, there's no need to open any ports for access to the agent. The agent installs no port 
listeners on any external ports. It actually does install a listener on the loopback, uh, the host loopback, um, which is convenient when you are executing commands there on the local host. If you do connect to the host and want to do something especially useful during development. But in production, the agent cannot be reached from the outside. So it, there isn't even the possibility of somebody connecting to the agent to hack it. So the agent, on the other hand, always reaches out and it reaches out to the exchange, it reaches out to the switchboard. Those are the two components that it talks to in the management hub. And they are both uh, accessed on the same port 443 or the HTTPS port in the management hub. The agbots, which they're the same color as the agent here, because as I mentioned earlier, it's actually the same piece of software. The agbots also reach out to the switchboard and the exchange from within the management hub. So some notes, the agents make their own decisions about what software to run on their local hosts. And they do that based on the policies that you set for them. All of the communications in this system are encrypted. And the agents are only known by their public key when they when they create a switchboard for them, I mean a mailbox for themselves in the switchboard, they identify themselves only with their public key. And uh, that's how the ag bots reach out to them using their public keys as their address. Also, the uh, the most important communications in the system, the agent agbot communications, they have perfect forward secrecy, meaning that each individual message that's sent is encrypted with a different key. And also only the agents and agbots have the key. The switchboard does not have the key uh, at any time. So the switchboard cannot read or insert communications between the agents and the agbots. So even if you compromise the switchboard, you could disrupt communication, but you cannot get the agent to run something that it did not think was appropriate. Also uh, note that the agents each independently pull their images, their container images from your set of Docker compatible registry, one or more uh, registries. And your containers, the data files that you deploy and your deployment details. And that's things like what ports your container is allowed to bind to, what volumes it's allowed to, to bind into the container whether it runs with uh, various capabilities or privileges, whether it's able to access particular devices on the machine, all of those things, the containers, the files, and the deployment information are all cryptographically signed by the authors. And I'll talk about that a bit later too. And then each agent independently verifies the checksums of the containers, the cryptographic signatures of the containers and their deployment information, et cetera before they act to deploy any container. And the agent, as I mentioned, is able to fall back to old versions of your containers on failures, even if the network connection gets disrupted. When we designed this system, we were imagining an environment where these things are in the field and they're going to have very unreliable network connections. Okay, uh, I just want to add one more little detail before hopefully you're not falling asleep out there. Um, how to deploy software in an environment like this. So uh, here's our developer. And she, first of all, has to containerize any software. We only deal with containerized software. So you use Docker build to build your container. And then eventually you have to Docker push it to some Docker compatible registry. And of course, these can be secure registries that require a read token to access the image. Um, or it could be a public registry like Docker Hub. Then when it comes time to put this software into Open Horizon, then the developer needs to cryptographically sign and publish it as a service in Open Horizon. And then uh, once the service has been published, you can choose to use either software deployment patterns or software deployment policies to regulate the deployment of the software out to which nodes in your large fleet of uh, edge machines. And later, if you also want to use the model management system, you can use a similar mechanism to deploy your data files using the CSS, which is the Cloud Sync Service, part of the model management service. And cloud is a little bit of a misnomer there because the management hub 
uh, although it can be in any of the public clouds, uh, it can also be on premise and uh, disconnected from the internet. So uh, in factory environments, for example, uh, they often do not want to have an internet connection. Some large percentage of factories will not allow an internet connection. And so the management hub can live inside the factory in that environment. OK, so there's a lot more to Open Horizon, of course. I left out all the cool stuff, really. So learn some more about it. So you can see why Open Horizon is better than the rest. And uh, here's a quick summary. Agents are autonomous, firewalled, driven by policies that you set. Nothing ever initiates contact with agents. Agents always reach out to the management hub. Agents are identified only by their public keys. So there's high privacy, all code, all data files, all deployment details, all cryptographically signed. It's highly decentralized, so it scales extremely well and the agents can continue to function when disconnected from the hub and all of the comms, even between the internal components in the management hub, by the way, are encrypted. And the agent agbot communications have perfect forward secrecy, as I mentioned. And if you are able to compromise the management hub, you still cannot take control of the agents because they have the policy that you've set for them on board. So if a management hub reaches out and tells them to do something that violates their policy, they simply won't do it. Okay, so now it's about time to hand over to John to give us an actual hands-on demo. So John, are you ready to take it away? Yes, I am, Glenn, really delighted. So thank you for the background. So now we're gonna dig in. Let me, I'm gonna share my screen, Glenn, if that's, yeah. uh, if that's allowed, I'll, I'll take control there. And um, hopefully you see that, perfect. Yep. All right, so what are we going to do? We're going to um, do an introduction to IEAM, so the introduction to IBM Edge Application Manager. And we're going to walk through the actual components that, uh, that Glenn introduced you to. Um, if you want to follow along, these, uh, these instructions are available in my public GitHub. I just dropped that into the chat. It's uh, github.com slash John Wallachy slash introduction to IEAM. And so let's uh, just drive into that there. So um, what we're going to do is we're actually going to install IAM and Open Horizon, the agent, on two of the Raspberry Pis. Do you see my cluster behind me, Glenn? I've got a little rack here. It's uh, six different Raspberry Pis. They do a variety of things in my house, control my sprinkler and, and so <laughs> forth in my back door. Um, but we're going to really focus in on two of them. So from the top, there's a... I rank, I order them rack one through rack six. We're going to play with uh, rack one and rack five. They run different versions of uh, Raspberry Pi OS and uh, Fedora 34. Um, so what we're going to do is walk through the instructions and actually build a variety of the packages and install the, the, um, the agent on these uh, systems. All right, let's give that a try. But I also remember when Glenn started to talk about the Open Horizon Management Hub and the differentiation that IBM adds on top of it, we, we build a web user experience. And I wanna show you that so that everyone can just move, uh, move that out of the way. Um, I'm gonna log into the IBM web console, right? So we've got in the IBM cloud running on Red Hat OpenShift a, an instance here. Let me just pick one that I know is, is interesting. I'm going to very quickly show you that. And then we're going to come back to um, uh, the, my actual Raspberry Pis, OK? All right, so you see here that I've got uh, nodes and services, patterns, and policies. Glenn started to talk about each one of them, and I'm going to dive in a little bit more so that we can you know, look at an edge node, some of my Raspberry Pis, the services, which are the containers for ARM, ARM64, Intel x86, PowerPC, RISC-V is coming, I heard, Glenn. That's pretty exciting. Um, so those are the services. Those are the containers. We're going to put our AI workloads inside of the container and deploy them as services here. And then we're gonna define a set of patterns and policies 
that tell IEAM and the Open Horizon Management Hub where to, which agents should run it based on a whole set of constraints and properties. So those are the four big sort of attributes that we're going to talk about today. You see here that I have, uh, when I look in my nodes, I've got an ARM64, that's going to be Rack 5, an ARM Raspberry Pi, ARM34, uh, sorry, ARM32, that's going to be Rack 1. And then I also, at some point, had installed my laptop x86 into uh, this particular management console as well. All right, let's go take a look at some of our Raspberry Pi. So we're going to um, actually follow through with my instructions here. We, we built this for just a couple of months ago, and um, it's a quick introduction to some of the uh, commands that you're going to run on your edge node uh, to manage, configure them into the, the console. Uh, we've got some architecture. I think Glenn did a great job of introducing you to the AgBot and the Exchange and the Management Service and SDO. We're going to push our containers to Docker Hub, but in production, I'm pushing most of my containers to private container registry services. So IBM Container Registry Service, Quay, there's a whole variety of them out there uh, with the right set of credentials. The um, the agent and the exchange will take care of all that for you. Okay. All right, let's get started. So I've already logged in here. I showed you a quick intro to the nodes and um, I showed you the patterns and the policies, but now we're gonna go explore the edge. And uh, so I have in my uh, a terminal on my Linux laptop, in the way you configure this, if you don't use SDO, you set a variety of environment variables and you'll see me um, there. I've got a variety of HCN horizon, right? HCN, those are, that's the CLI. And we're gonna run a bunch of CLI commands. I've already put them into my bash RC file. So I don't have to copy credentials around for you all. Um, and on my Raspberry Pis, I've got them configured here. All right, so I've named my edge node. And if you see over here in the management console, when I go click on them, one is called uh, JW um, is my initial. So Pi 4, edge 1, that's the top one. Pi 3, edge 5, that's further down in my little cluster. Two of them are unregistered. One is registered. They're not running any workloads yet. And we're going to actually deploy some of those workloads. Okay. All right. So the first thing we're going to do, let's go put that in my buffer because I do want to install. I'm going to uninstall and then install it um, in here. So let's go take a look. Rack five, um, you name dash A. You'll notice that it is running Raspbian or Raspberry Pi OS 64, sort of the beta. And it is an ARM. 64 image there. That's the, and I've already configured this into my exchange. Um, when I run the horizon node list command, you see the name. I, you saw that up in the console. The org is think. Um, it is not running any particular workloads. We, we can run some workloads here. Important thing is it's an architecture. We support multiple architectures with IBM Edge Application Manager and Open Horizon. Let's go take a look here. Hopefully this is done. I was running a test in the background, Glenn. I was hoping we can get this going. But if not, um, let's go and we're going to do a Horizon unregister. I actually, I'm going to drop this to the top here and I'm going to do a horizon unregister um, and we're going to just whack the whole thing. Okay. So now we're, we're removing this particular edge node from the exchange and we're going to reinstall it. Um, just hopefully I've got all my environment variables configured and we'll give that a try. The other one is sort of What's it doing? 
I was building, I was building my work, my edge workload and it was going slow. It is a Raspberry Pi, let's be honest. All right, so now we're unregistered here. Let's, uh, let's clear that screen again. And remember, it's my buffer, so I'll paste it, uh, but I need to be in the right directory here. And uh, so now we're reaching up to the management console. Uh, you'll notice here, I'm gonna pull down a, a zip file where it has all the components on it. It's going to install it. If I had all the auth tokens right, which I don't have on this particular one. All right, we're gonna just do it here, Glenn. Clear. Ah, oh, the fun of live demos. I know, it's great fun. Unregister dash V R F E. And uh, so we're going to do the same thing. I had started to do that over on rack five. I'm going to do it on rack one. All right. So now I'm unregistering from the exchange and I'm going to step through the registration of an edge node and run some of the commands. There we go. And uh, so let's now CD into the right directory like I was earlier and let's do a paste. And you'll notice here what I'm going to do, I'm running the agent install. I'm reaching up to the uh, CSS and I'm going to by default install a little test pattern. It's called the IBM web Hello test pattern. And uh, so you'll see that run in a second. What do you think? I was wondering why it was running so slow there. While that's running, I can go set up tokens here. Let's see, I think I've got them in a bash RC file. Yes, I do. Let's just see if I can source that. Reg to think. Excellent. Now let's go and run the age. There we go. Yeah. Um, Pattern and policy set. Yeah. So what I just got it. Well, I'll do is I won't. I won't register the pattern. There we go. Both of them are now running, Glenn. That's good. All right, so what we're gonna see next as, as it installs the components, there's a new version of, um, did we talk about the open source project too much yet? Um, let's just jump up to Open Horizon because that's the, why we're here at the LF Edge Summit. And- um, Yeah, Open Horizon is an LF Edge uh, project. Right. Um, and uh, you can see the various components there. Annex is the software that's used for both the agent and the agbots. And the exchange API is the software that's used for both the switchboard and the exchange. And uh, there's various other things. So the examples repo has a whole bunch of just example workloads that we use to, to deploy, to show things working. And uh, DevOps is our uh, mechanisms for doing releases. And the edge sync service is uh, the part of the model management system that lives on the edge device with uh, the agent. And the SDO support software is the instructions and how to deploy the SDO uh, uh, core software onto an a simulated SDO device if you wanted to do that for yourself. And it has the uh, rendezvous server that uh, that we run in the management hub uh, in case you want to use it. Normally people don't use the rendezvous server in the management hub. And, yeah. and actually even when I'm when I'm making a simulated SDO device, I usually just point out to one of the manufacturers like Intel uh, has uh, Intel was the original creator of the SDO software. So I just point at their uh, rendezvous server. It doesn't matter, any rendezvous server will work. 
All right, let's go take a look at how we're doing on, on mine. So I remember I'm running the agent install and uh, that's what's running on rack one. On rack five, uh, looks like we've downloaded the packages. I don't know why everything has gone super slow for me. Um, so I'm watching, uh, watching uh, Netflix in the... No house. one is. I sent everyone <laughs> off to school then. That's true. Working from right. home is always fun. Yeah, so here's what we're going to do next. So we're going to talk through what's going to happen. Um, and uh, so I just want to introduce to you to a couple of things. So I, throughout the little tutorial, I actually exercised cans on keyboard, the various commands that I want you to sort of get experience with. So Horizon version tells you what version of the agent you're running on your uh, edge node. And then you saw that I can run the unregister, so I can unregister myself from the exchange. Um, if I want to watch it configure a particular agreement, so depending on my node and what my constraints and policies and uh, properties are, the exchange and the agent will determine, they'll build an agreement that says, you should run this particular workload. And, and that's what you can list out with your agreement list. Yeah, to just to state that a little bit more precisely, the ag bots inside the management hub will reach out and make a proposal to the agent on the inch nodes. And then the okay. agent is the one that's going to decide what, whether it runs or not based upon the policy that is existent, existing on the agent. And so then uh, you can look at what agreements have been formed, what agreements have been rejected by the agent. But generally speaking, the, the AgBot knows the policy. And so the AgBot only makes proposals that it's confident that the agent should accept. The only thing that might stop the agent from accepting it is that it might not have had an updated policy or something like that. Um, and then that will just be a matter of time until it, the next time it reaches out to see if its policy should be updated. All right, this is what I expected, Glenn. We must have had a, a hiccup there. Um, you'll notice when I said install the pattern, it's now, it installed the agent, it configured it, started it up, and now it is downloading the pattern um, IBM Web Hello, Hello World. And it's it's now the AgBot is proposing an agreement. And so there you see, uh, we've started to establish that agreement. There's a finalized. And now the service is being pulled down. There's actually a container for WebHello. And in just a moment, it'll get started. Yeah, it takes a minute for it to. Uh, check the see. checksum of the container and check its cryptographic signature and yeah. etc. cetera. And We're going to so actually talk about that because when we build a container later, fingers crossed to the demo gods, we'll, um, we'll actually have to sign our container. And, and then because we want to make sure that it's cryptographically the, the right container. And we're going to put the details of that in in the exchange. All right, so there, hopefully it's going to get started. Oh, you all know that you can ask questions, right? I am in the chat, you you're welcome to do that. Well, we're watching the chat, both Glenn and I off to the side. Yeah, chat and the Q&A. Here we go, Ex execution is started. Let's see how Rack see 5 that. is doing. Rack 5 is still stuck. Don't know why. We're only able to see a portion of your windows. It's oh, clipped yeah? off at the bottom. Yeah, there it's visible. Is that there. better? Yeah. Oh, I guess it's the, yeah, it's the bar, the toolbar at the bottom of the Zoom is covering it up. I thought it was, ah. I thought oh, it was your end, but it's my end. Yeah. 
That's, that's okay. Cool. So, so here we got that's a success. Great. So now we can do a horizon uh, agreement list. And you see that I've got a uh, the web hello, the hello world pattern is now running. And if I do a Docker, I'll do a clear just so that you'll see. And I do a Docker PS, there's the appropriate container for ARM now running on my Raspberry Pi. All right, so that's you can good. do. Let's, let's you can do a Docker. You could look at the output from that container if you wanted to. Yeah, we're going to get to that in a moment, Greg, okay. uh, Glenn. Okay. Um, we're going to use a Horizon node list. And uh, let's go take a look. We've got our, our Raspbian Pi, it's a Pi 4, Rack 1. It is running the ARM architecture. And uh, we've got ourselves a, um, a pattern that's active. So those are the types of things that we can pull out of node list. All right, let's go keep taking a look here. There's always web uh, horizon help. If you guys get stuck, you can do that. Actually, let's also mention that any horizon command, like even a partial command, like the next command John has down there of HCN exchange service list, you can at any point in the typing that like HCN exchange service, put a minus H after that, and it'll give you help that's context sensitive to whatever part of the command that you're in. And there's also a man entry for HCN installed. So you can go man HCN to get details there as well. Just yeah, very useful cool. tricks. All right, so let's drop our next command in here. So this is horizon exchange service list. So we wanna see all of the containers, all of the services that are available in my uh, management hub. And you'll notice that there's a mix here. There is x86, there's PowerPC, there are some ARM containers, there's ARM64 containers. So we've got, we're not confined by a singular architecture. We can build edge for our edge. It can be a whole variety of architectures. Um, someday in the near future, Glenn, I'm hoping we see uh, risk five here as well. Mm -hmm. So I should note though that this is not all of the um, services in the management hub. It's just all of the services in the IBM organization in the management hub. Right. So um, actually, we should probably change that name. But um, it the IBM org is the one where uh, all of the publicly usable services go. So everything uh, that we publish as an example goes into the IBM org uh, in Open Horizon. But uh, each individual user of Open Horizon uh, is part of an organization. So, you know, if I was ABC company, I might be in org ABC, and there might be, you know, 20 users in org ABC. And I could say, HCN exchange service list and not specify IBM slash. And I'd see all the services that are available in the ABC org. And of course I could also publish uh, with public equals true uh, my service to make it available to other organizations besides the organization I'm in. So, you know, if a company had multiple organizations that might be a useful thing. And, you know, it's a multi-tenant system, so, you know, there can be many orgs in, in one of the management hubs that we are using right now. I think, John, you're using this one as well. There's 50 different organizations currently uh, right. for various different companies or various different departments within uh, our company. Correct. All right. So the next command I wanted to exercise for everyone is the Horizon Exchange Pattern List. And I said at IBM. And so here, these are some of the example patterns that you saw the examples directory. Uh, we've got a, a number of examples. There's a hello world that we're running that one already. Uh, we've got one that just exercises the secrets manager, uh, the management model management service, event streams. You'll see here different architectures now for our Intel x86 and um, ARM ARM64. 
right. also while we're looking at that list actually can you bring it back up again just for a second so um i mentioned a couple of times in the talk that we also support various kubernetes clusters as nodes so when you deploy to a kubernetes cluster what you have to deploy is an operator so you use the operator sdk to create an operator instead of creating a um, just a container and operators are very powerful tools that enable you to exercise any of the features of Kubernetes. So like uh, scaling, redundancy, you know, failover of the entire service. Um, all of those kind of features can be built into your operator if you, you, know, you need to have uh, mobility of your service from one node to the next or whatever, that kind of thing. Um, but you can deploy an operator as a service if it's a cluster node. And so those operator ones, we can't deploy on this Raspberry Pi because it's not a cluster. And the same thing, we can't deploy just a simple uh, container onto a cluster. You have to deploy operators onto the cluster. All right. All right. So let's, uh, we're going to run out of time here, Glenn. Let's, let's keep it. Yeah. Going. We got All right. A lot so of... Horizon Exchange Deployment List Policy. So let's, Let's just talk about that for a second because deployments, and, and you'll notice, I'll just clear my screen here, that we're just in my particular management hub, I don't have any deployment policies. And so you'll just get a, an empty array here. But if we were to scale this, we would certainly define a whole set of policies. Now, interesting about a policy is you can run multiple policies on a machine, whereas you can only run one pattern on an edge node. All right, let's go jump over back again, scroll down. Which now, remember you were asking about logs. Let's go take a look at the event log. And the event log is the log of the agent, but I was talking about the log of the container itself, uh, but whatever. Yeah, so I could do a Docker dash F on that. On that Docker way. logs, yeah. yeah. But that's just normal Docker commands. I was True. really focused on the horizon commands. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. If I if we we can go there, let's just do a I'll do a clear just so that folks Docker PS. And then I can do a Docker logs dash F on 311 here. Oh, and every couple of seconds it echoes web yeah. hello uh, hello world yeah okay. it's not a very exciting example yeah and now we've containerized ai models so uh, we're you know we've got a lot of different different ones there all right so let's so we've got another one that we're going to actually build interactively here and it went glenn, glenn you've got one here it's called the web hello and so i i get cloned it to my repos my local raspberry pi here and I CD into that directory. Of course, I can I want to do a Docker login because I'm going to push it up to uh, Docker Hub. Okay. And then the next thing I'm going to do is jump over to that directory here. And let's do a clear and an LS. Um, so it looks like you've got a, uh, a Docker file. That's going to define what the container looks like. A make file to go build it. Um, you've got a, a Python script that's probably going to uh, execute the little web server, uh, web hello. Let's go take a look at the Docker file itself. I was just playing with that. Alpine was giving me trouble earlier. And so I switched over to Ubuntu. Um, and so I'm going to do a app get update and an install. And then I'm going to install Flask as our little web server. And then we're going to execute. Uh, we're going to copy our web hello Python script into it. And then that, that will be our web server. OK. Just There's, a problem. That. There's a problem with Alpine right now that your host needs to have libseccomp up to date, or it won't work with Alpine. Yeah, so what's with that, man? I just found that out like two hours ago. Yeah, well, that that's been a problem with Alpine for about six months now. Yeah. <laughs> Just, you know, I... all right. So our our little web hello uh, server it starts up a, a Flask hello. It's and it's going to echo 
to looks like you got some HTML here. It says web hello. And then it grabs the IP address of the requester and it's going to respond with the IP address back to the um that yeah uh, web that's page, what it does. Okay? Yeah, that whatever looks, your client IP address is. Yeah. Yeah, it looks pretty simple. Cool. Let's go take a look at the make file next. Um VI on the make file. And I needed to do a couple of little massages here because I want to push it to my Docker hub. Those are the credentials I had. So I, I dropped in uh, Wallachy. And then I wanted to make sure that the container I built is unique. So I did a little dash Wallachy. And I, and I also made sure I have the right architecture and the right pattern. So I've, I've customized the first five lines of this make file and everything else is the same looks like you've got a, a make build it does a docker build on the docker file and you've got a, a stop and here you this what's interesting here you push to docker hub and then there's a number of horizon commands here let's go explore these two so we're going to do an exchange horizon exchange service publish and that's going to sign the container uh, we've already, and then make sure that we you know we def in our little service JSON file, which is has a couple of properties in it. Um, we're going to make sure that it's now available in our web console, and then we're going to publish the pattern. Those are the two big ones. All right, let's, and then we're going to run it at the bottom here. We're going to actually do an agent run. We're going to actually register this edge node to run that pattern which we just built. All right, so that looks cool. Thank you for putting that together for us. And uh, so let's do it, fingers crossed, because it wasn't working earlier. So let's just do a clear, and we'll do a make uh, make build. And um, so from Ubuntu 18.04, app get update, app get install, Python, install Flask, yeah. Uh, yeah, so you were, yeah, you changed the base image, so you changed what software is in there. Yeah, so exactly. this is probably not a great example. Yeah, so. not a great example. Um, but let's just walk through here. Um, remember, we had a, when we sign our, our container, we need signing keys. And so we have to generate the, some signing keys. Now on a Raspberry Pi, it takes a little while, does a little bit of entropy on that. It, what essentially what it does is it creates two little, uh, uh, the public key and the private key. And then we're gonna do a make build, which is failing and a make push and then a publish service and then a publish pattern. Um, and then we're gonna unregister our, our node. So it's not running that hello world anymore. And then we're gonna we would have run the um, the container actually on that particular node here. All right, and then to test it out, there's a big test. The other thing we can do, let's go see how we did here. Never finished the download on the other one. I don't know why, but we're sort of stuck on that, Glenn. But I wanted to to just encourage everyone over in my, my window here is to go and let's do a little tour of, of it here. I'm gonna jump over to services. And remember I had a, a whole variety of, of test services. There's web hello, a lot of different architectures, ARM, ARM64. Intel and PowerPC. And I built two of them already for, for other architectures. So that's kind of cool. Patterns, let's jump over to patterns and event streams. And there's a whole variety of those. And policies, we don't have very many policies. So we've made the web console nice and easy so you don't have to memorize too many of the open source CLI commands. That was important. Um, 
if you're planning to learn more about Open Horizon, I know Glenn, you've got some closing slides which we can we can turn to pretty soon. Um, if you go to openhorizon.org or Open Horizon, there we go, that one. We've got some nice documentation and quick starts here as well. You've got some nice videos. Um, and if you want to go and build the, um, the open source project, you can get the exchange up and running. There's an all-in-one by just grabbing the all-in-one. You don't obviously need OpenShift and IBM Cloud if you just want to play with the open source project. So really fun, uh, fun way to, this obviously downloads a number of containers to your system. All right, Glenn, do you want to take it away and, and do some closing remarks? Yeah, sure. Right, we'll stop sharing. Yeah, let's go back over here and get out of the way here. I really hate the way that happens. How do I start this playing? Oh, well, we'll we can just go in like this. Okay, and I'll close these windows. Oh, now it's moved and I can hit play from start. I hate the way that Zoom puts that little toolbar right over top of the menu of the application so you can't actually execute. Oh, yeah. I push it off to the side right away. Uh, it's not possible to do that for me. There's no nothing to grab onto. Maybe I, oh, I can grab on that. Ah, okay, so now I need to stop that and go back up here to play from current slide. Okay, so, oh no, that's wrong slide, sorry. It got jumped to the front. I want to go back down here to this slide and there we go. Okay, so uh, there's a LF Edge uh, channel on YouTube and there's a, a playlist there uh, full of technical deep dives into various technical topics and some more detailed uh, flow animations showing the communication between the different components so you can see how secure it is. There's a um, QR code that points to that playlist. There's a dozen videos there. I made all of them, I think, um, from light introductions and uh, lots of hands-on doing uh, similar kinds of things to what um, John was doing here today uh, to show you how to actually uh, walk through the steps of doing it yourself. And the, this is the link that John just showed you. And there's the source code link. And there's two different repositories that contain example programs as well. And if you want to reach out and communicate with the Open Horizon team, you can use the matrix messaging system. Uh, LF Edge just recently switched away from Slack to use matrix and that URL will get you there. You need to create your own account and um, that's free and you can sign up and start talking to us there. And of course, you, you've also got uh, my email address and John's email address on the screen here as well. So with that, I'll stop sharing. Yeah, Glenn, I just, so I just fixed up that. You'll notice at the very end here, my make build just finished. So that was kind of awesome. Let's do a make push. And I'm going to push that container up to Docker Hub. And, and so now I've just built that, that little Python flask uh, container. I had a, you know, as I edited my Docker file, there was a, I was hacking it to use Ubuntu. All right, so now we've got um, that published up to Docker Hub. It's not the smallest because I switched from Alpine to 280 Ubuntu. megabytes, yeah, as yeah. opposed to probably eight megabytes for Alpine. Right, yeah. well, here we go. But the next step is going to be a make publish service. And we'll we'll run that. Uh, next, just so that everyone sees. Oh, we could take questions too while, while this is running, Glenn. Mm -hmm. Anyone who's interested in asking us about Open Horizon or some of the CLI comments. Don't see any questions. Um, does anyone want to raise their hand? I don't see any hands raised either.
We wish we were doing this in person for sure. Next time. Yeah, in person is a lot better. Push 225. Come on. You no, can do it, Raspberry Pi. All right. Amen to this. Okay. Can't make my upload go any faster. There we go. All right, the make publish service is my next command. Cool, make publish service. Did you already do a key create command? I, I had already, yes, I had already yeah. done the, I remember I talked about it. Yeah, so, so I, did, could, I already had, it takes a, that takes a while on a Raspberry Pi as well. Yeah, it does, but um, you can use existing key if you have one, but you can also make uh, HCN key create will create your cryptographic signing key for you. Yes. But if you have an existing one, you can use that instead. Now you remember unregister dash V. And I'm so what I'm going to do is stop the hello world. And I'm going to start this one. And I'll just do this on a clear here. Let's just clear my screen. Hopefully that'll finish. So it's tearing down the agreement for the old one. I should pick a faster device. <laughs> I thought I moved to the Pi 4 is going to be a little bit faster. There we go. All right, now we're going to do a make agent run. So just uh you know, some pro tips for you. You can uh, reconfigure the agent to uh, pull more frequently so it doesn't uh, wait around a lot like it, it does by default. It's configured normally because we want to be able to hit 40,000 nodes on a management hub. But if you're doing a smaller number, you can tell the agent to pull, you know, instead of once every minute or whatever it is by default, you can have it you know, every 10 seconds pull. So that, that speeds up the interactivity of it. And also, you know, you're using a very large image for the example here. So, you know, it takes a certain amount of time to download 300 megabytes. Um, yep. And if you, you know, best practice for work on the edge is to use a smaller base image like a busy box or Alpine or- Yeah, uh, for sure. Or even there's a there's a small version of Ubuntu and there's uh, what do they call it Ubuntu Core, and um, that's a bit smaller as well. All right, two more things. Let's so we see here that we've got ourselves now a pattern. That's there. There's our web hello Python wallachy, and it's running a service for ARM. And it is now running on, if I go and jump over to there, jump off of patterns over to services. Yeah, let's just do the list view. And we see that it's, looks good. There is our, our uh, container. Now, Let's, uh, so now we know it's running here. We can do a Docker PS. Let's do, there it is. Let's do a clear again. And we're going to do a make uh, test. And if I remember, was it make test? Make file. Thousand. We should have exposed it on port eight thousand. Okay. Anyway, so that is there. We was glad to see it running, though, Glenn. Right? Yeah. Good stuff. All right. If you all want to follow us along, I'm available on GitHub. 
Uh, and also on Twitter. So follow me on Twitter. And uh, so find me there. That's kind of fun. Um, I think we're going to close off here. Any other questions before we drop? Uh, we can come off mute. If you want to come off mute, you can, we can unmute you. That's for, that's for sure. All right. We wanted to thank everyone for joining the LF Edge Summit and our Deploy IBM Edge Application Manager AI workloads. Um, be safe. Hopefully we we'll see you next year. Bye. Thanks for joining.